rugged cross. Evangelist George Burden, who was born in 1873, died in 1958, gave this first person account of the composition of his most famous hymn to a publishing acquaintance, George W. Sandwell, sometime before 1943. George said, I was praying for a full understanding of the cross and its plan in Christianity. I read and studied and prayed. I saw Christ on the cross inseparably. The Christ of the cross became more than a symbol. The scene pictured a method, outlined a process and revealed a consummation of a spiritual experience. It was like seeing George, John 3, verse 16, leave the printed page, take form, and act out the meaning of redemption. While watching this scene with my mind's eye, the theme of the song came to me, and with it the melody, but only the words of the theme. The old rugged cross came. An inner voice seemed to say, wait. <coughs> I was holding evangelistic meetings in Michigan, but could not continue with the poll. After a series of meetings in New York State, the following week, I tried again to compose the poem, but could not. It was only after I had completed the New York meeting and returned to Michigan for further evangelistic work that the floodgates were loosened. Many experiences of the redeeming grace of God through our Lord Jesus Christ during those meetings had broken down all barriers. I was unable to complete the poem with facility and dispatch. A friend aided in putting it into manuscript form. Charles H. Gabriel, to whom the manuscript was sent, returned it with a prophetic statement you will hear from this song. Likewise, when I was sung, strung my guitar and sang it to Reverend and Mrs. Broderick upon my return to Michigan, the felt it had, the felt as had Mr. Gabriel, for they said, God has given you a song that will never die. It has moved us as no other song has ever moved us. The old rock across. We stand to sing. Two, three, six, the old rugged cross.
622. Page 622 for Psalm 30. And this psalm is the base for the next song, song we're going to hear about in a minute. Be still for the presence of the Lord. It's Psalm 30 on page 622 and we'll say it by alternate half verse. I will exalt you, O Lord, because you have raised me up. And I will let my foes triumph over me. O Lord, my God, I cry out to you, and you have been me. You brought me up, O Lord, from the dead. You restored to me life from among those that go down to the Sing to the Lord, you servants of his. For his wrath endures but the twinkling of an eye, his favour for a lifetime. May endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. In my prosperity, I said, I shall never be moved. You, Lord, of your goodness, have made my hill so strong. Then you hid your face from me, and I was utterly dismayed. To you, O Lord, I cried. To the Lord, I made my supplication. What profit is there in my blood if I go down to the pit? The dust praise you, O declare your faithfulness. Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon me. O Lord, be my help. You have turned my mourning into dancing. You have put off my sackcloth and girded me with gladness. Therefore my heart sings to you without ceasing. O Lord, my God, I will give you thanks for all. Be still for the presence of the Lord. Is a contemporary hymn written by a British songwriter. David J. Evans, in 1986. Evans was involved in the charismatic movement, but felt that some of his worship risked treating God in a tri trivial fashion. This hymn has been heard on the BBC Songs of Praise and was voted as one of the UK 10 most popular hymns in 2019. The hymn is both profound and very simple. It is filled with biblical references and allusions. Anyone who knows their hymn, their Bible stories, will be able to go through it line by line and be able to recognise episodes from which Evans might have found inspiration. The breadth of biblical theology encompassed in this single psalm is vast. The hymn book says it is based on Exodus 3, 1 to 6, but it starts in Genesis and runs right through the book to the book of Revelation. We see God turning up through Joseph's ladder, Moses and the burning bush, Elijah and the still small voice, through the stand, Psalms, and into the New Testament on the Mount of Transfiguration and into the Holy of Holiness in Revelation. God can turn up to any of us. His presence can surround and fill us. We will hear more details of this song in future weeks. But for now, let us quieten our hearts and invite his presence to come into our lives and situations.
have in Jesus. Joseph Scriven was born in Ireland in 1890. He was educated and received a degree from Trinity College in Dublin and became a teacher. With plans to settle down and soon to marry, life was good for Joseph. Unfortunately, the day before his wedding, his future wife drowned. The grief was more than he could bear, so Joseph moved to Canada to start over again. There he met and fell in love again with Eliza Rice and planned to be married. It's unthinkable that you could lose so much in one young lifetime, but weeks before they were to be wed, Eliza became sick and died from her illness. Joseph was only 25. From this heartache and through faith in his God, a mission was born. Joseph took a vow of poverty and began to help the poor and the handicapped in any way he could. For 10 years he made himself available to come alongside those that were in need and he found comfort and purpose in serving. Then, unbelievably, heartache would again strike. Scriven was still in Canada, while his mother was still in Ireland. She became ill, and Scriven did not have the funds to help her, or even to go to be with her. However, he penned the words to this poem for her. It has since comforted and encouraged and uplifted subsequent generations. Some people in life face so much tragedy and I hadn't read that story that I could remember of what a friend we have in Jesus. And the lady who sent it in to me had also experienced much tragedy in her life. And as I read the meaning behind that wonderful hymn, it moved me to tears. We have a friend in Jesus, in whatever we go through, in whatever our situation and circumstances, and oft times we have things going on in our lives that no one else knows about. But we hold on to that assurance that through the old rugged cross, we have a friend in Jesus. So we stand uh, to sing, what a friend we have in Jesus, in six to seven.
if you could turn in your hymn books to number 565. Number 565. We are going to use this hymn today for prayers. It was written by Jenny Hewer in 1945. There are no other details of her life or her story, but somehow I think that's fitting because the whole purpose of this hymn is to acknowledge that it's not about us, that we can't do it on our own that we need God's help. It is indeed a hymn, but it's also written as a prayer for us to sing. So we're going to read it through together. Father, I place into your hands the things that I can do. Father, I place into your hands the times that I've been through. Father, I place into your hands the way that I should go. For I know I always can trust you. Father, I place into your hands my friends and family. Father, I place into your hands the things that trouble me. Father, I place into your hands the person I would be, for I know I always can trust you. Father, I love to seek your face. I love to hear your voice. Father, I love to sing your praise and in your name rejoice. Father, I love to walk with you and in your presence rest, for I know I always can trust you. Father, I want to be with you and do the things you do. Father, I want to speak the words that you are speaking to. Father, I want to love the ones that you will draw to you, for I know that I am one with you. We pause for a moment as we place our troubles into his hands. In Christ Alone, 2001, is one of the most popular Christian songs in this century. It was written and composed jointly by Northern Irishman Keith Getty and Englishman Stuart Townend. Both are worship leaders and songwriters who have collaborated to produce some of the most well-known and vibrant hymns of this era. In Christ Alone grew first out of an excitement to write hymns that would help 21st century Christians sing, know, and embrace the incredible truths of the Lord in fresh language. And second, out of a frustration with the lack of depth in the songs that were being sung in many churches. Townend and Getty both admit they are motivated by the idea of capturing biblical truth in songs and hymns that will not only cause people to express their worship in church, but will build them up in their Christian lives. 
Since its initial creation, several versions of In Christ Alone have been recorded by artists around the world. Townend says, The one that always moves me most is when we recorded it with a congregation of 8,000 at the Stoneleigh Bible Week in England a couple of years ago. When we finished the third verse about the resurrection of Christ, there's an extraordinary burst of praise from the congregation that at the time was overwhelming and listening back still sends a shiver down my spine. Both men have been amazed by the response to the song, saying that they had received some incredible emails about how people have been helped by the song through incredibly difficult circumstances. One email described how a US soldier serving in Iraq would pray through each verse of the song every day and how the promises of God's protection and grace helped to sustain him through the enormous pressures and dangers of life in a war zone. Townend said, We in the West have had our sense of safety and security brutally torn apart by recent world events, and it's caused many to reevaluate the foundations of their life. I feel that the song has helped to stir faith in many believers that God really is our protector, that our lives are in His unshakable hands. <laughs>
Lord, we thank you for the truth of your gospel conveyed to us in your written word of the Bible and conveyed in the meaning of these hymns written from the depths of their being from your saints' hearts. Lord, we really thank you, Lord, that these hymns too reflect our experience and sometimes our situations. And we thank you that we have the assurance that you are our Saviour, that on the old broken cross you died for us, that we may be still and know you in your presence, and always, Lord, know that we have a friend in you, because in Christ we are not alone. And so, Lord, we thank you for one another, those here and those who cannot be here. We join together in the words our Saviour taught us. Say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. together the grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. We have one more hymn to finish with which is 658. One more step along the world I go. It was written by English historian, folk singer, and songwriter Sidney Bretton Parker. He was also author of the Lord of the Giants. It was first published in 1971 by Stainer and Bell This hymn is, illustrates the life of the journey, calling upon God to be our companion in the cloud. <coughs> it is often sung at the end of the school year, thinking of the next step in life. Sometimes this song is sung at funerals as Christians see death as the next step of their journey with God. It is based on the words of Julian of Norwich, also known as Juliana of Norwich, today Julian or Mother Julian, who lived a consecrated life in the grounds of the church in Norwich in the Middle Ages during the Bonnet Plagues. She wrote the earliest and best songs of all the youth. In the English language, Revelations of Divine Love, written by a woman. Julian wrote, How can we live well when so many suffer? All will be well, and none will be well, and the whole manner of things will be well. Living in the life of God fosters a sense of wellness in all things. This sense of wellness is knowing God provides a foundation for actions that transform the world. God of your goodness, give me yourself. You are enough for me. And I have less than I could ask for and would not do you for longer. If I ask anything that is less, I shall always lack something. But in you alone, I have everything. May we take one more step in our life journeys, knowing that God is with us and all will be well. Thank you very much, Kessa, who got handed a reading just as she came in the door. So, thank you. So we're going to sing uh, one more step along the world like 